Sorry about that. There we go. My apologies, Jason, Logan, all the other babies for the squeak. We are so glad that you are here this morning to come and celebrate the birth of Jesus, our King. Amen? Amen. Turn to somebody next to you and say, Merry Christmas. As my grandson says, Merry Christmas. And I tell you, every time Landon told me Merry Christmas, it just lit up my grandpa heart. And so thank you for being here this morning to celebrate Christmas together. It's a special time, isn't it? A time that we can all come together and celebrate the birth of Jesus. And as I was preparing for this message, you know, we've, we've had Advent and we've been leading up to today. A time that we celebrate, a time of anticipation. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Luke chapter 2 and read about the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken to the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place with Quirinus while Quirinus was governor of Syria. Now, I have to stop right there. As a children's pastor and many children's program, that governor's name is like Jesus. Like, Lord, couldn't you? Yeah. But anyway, back to the scripture. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men whom his favor rest. When angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And it and all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pause once again. Lord, we do come to praise and worship you. Lord, I just pray you bless this service. Bless our families as we've come together to celebrate your birth. All these things we ask. Amen. Amen. What a time that we've come together. You know, as we think about Christmas, uh, the joy. Think about all the songs that have joy in them at Christmas time. Joy to the world. Good Christian, Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the, of the skies. Lots of joy here on Christmas Day. It is a joy to be together. I know many have had Christmas presents and, and lots of activities early this morning. I ask a time as we come together, you relax. And we concentrate on him, a time to celebrate his birth. As we started off reading, in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. 
and everyone went to their own town to register. This is the greatest human event in history. So Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room for, available for them. Can you picture Mary and Joseph? They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're going to pay their taxes. And I hope Pastor Brad don't talk about taxes here at Christmas Day. But they were going about their business. They were following what they were told to do. The Roman Empire, had, you know, they had to go and pay their tax. So Joseph and Mary were forced to go to Bethlehem and register. They weren't there on their, by their own choice. I want you to notice in verse 6, it says, While they were in Bethlehem, going about their business, the time came for the baby to be born. Kelly and I have had three children. Sarah, uh, you know, we had a sonogram. We knew kind of the due date. And, of course, she didn't come on time. And, you know, the due date came and it went. And, and I remember that morning I was teaching down at Exeter and uh, got the call. And I rush home and we get in the car and we drive to Joplin and I broke a few speed laws that morning and it was all right because we were going for a birth and 14 hours later she arrived <laughs> and that, that, I was thinking about this you know Mary and Joseph uh, they were going about their business they were going about their daily lives just like we are going about our daily lives today And then Jesus came into their life. Have you ever noticed that God works in your life at just the right time? And, and, and I'm like, well, you know, Lord, I, I think this would be good right now. This, this is my plan. Lord, you know, if this, and you fill in the blank. But when God wants to do something in your life, he does it at just the right time. And, you know, many times I, I think, Lord, I, I'm not ready for this. Just like Mary, I'm sure she probably thought she was not ready for this. They, they didn't know it was the right time that God had arranged that they were going about their business, doing life. And I want to tell you this morning, I think this morning is the right time that God has something special for you. Something special that he may be calling you to do. This time in, in, in your life might be that time that God has been that little gentle nudge, that the, whatever that might be, that God is asking you to follow him. God wants to do great things in your life. Do you believe that? God wants to do great things. So let's go back a little bit before Jesus was born and read what the angel said to both Joseph and Mary announced to them that a change was coming. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, it says, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine the pressure? I know as a parent, it's like, wow, they were raising, are going to give birth to Jesus and will be raising Jesus, Son of God, who will change 
the world. You know, that's uh, many of you and my mom, uh, um, you know, I'd run out the door and I'd forget to close the door. Are you born in a barn? Jesus could say, yeah. <laughs> kind of a trickle effect. That's, there you go. A change that they did not choose, but a change that would change the world. I get caught up in, in things around me that, 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 boy, you know, Lord, it seems like if you would change this, things would be a lot better. My life would be a lot better. But God has the right time for each of us. God wants us to make changes in our lives. The change that he wants to make is within us. He wants us to draw closer to him and trust him in all things. Let's look at verses 8 and 9. We get a clear picture of how the good news of joy came into the world We find first that the good news of great joy was first given to very simple people. Shepherds were in the fields making their living and working hard. Shepherds had the constant job of leading their flocks to fields where they would graze and leading them to running water or to wells where they could drink. Shepherds had the constant job of keeping wandering sheep together. At night, the time of this particular passage was not a time off for shepherds. It was at at night that predators would stalk the sheep and also most likely time for thieves to also prowl around and try to steal sheep. It was to these simple, hardworking people that the good news of great joy was first communicated. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Can you imagine? Now, I've been out. I love to camp. Love to tent camp. Any tent campers out here? That's yeah, getting fewer and fewer, isn't it? Uh, my wife loves to camp in a camping trailer, right? But she still likes to go out around that campfire. So in my mind, I can just picture uh, the shepherds. I don't know. It doesn't read in there that they got a nice big fire going. But I just picture they're out around that fire. Somebody's watching the sheep. Others are sitting around. And they are a bunch of guys, so I'm sure they're telling a bunch of stories. And then an angel of the Lord appears to them. And they were terrified, as all of us, I'm sure, would have been. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. You know, he didn't say, I bring good news for those in Carthage. I I bring good news for those in America. I bring good news for those that are wealthy or, or those that are men or women. I bring good news to all the people. The news is for all. We are charged with telling all about Jesus. What is this good news? Let's look to verse 11. Unto you born this day in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord, which fulfilled the prophecy found in Isaiah 7, 14, where it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Notice the titles given to Jesus in verse 11. Savior. This speaks of Jesus as a sacrifice. 
Jesus came to this earth for you and for me. He came to die for our sin. A sacrifice for us. Messiah, the promised and expected deliverer. Lord, one to be worshipped and adored. Amen? This Christmas morning is as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Let's remember that He came to be our sacrifice, our deliverer, and to be adored. He, he wasn't called a prophet, teacher, good role model, but Lord. We must see Him as that and worship Him and serve Him as Lord. The Savior was born. He brought salvation. He was, is salvation. He brought deliverance for our sin. That's the good news tidings of great joy. The greatest news of all time. Let's read on. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. As the shepherds are trying to process the message from here we have an angel, they're, they're taking back it again in verse 13 because the, this proclamation is punctuated with an explosion of praise. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God. The word suddenly means the heavenly host came unexpectedly and without warning. The phrase great company, I found, means that there are so many that it was impossible to count. The sky was filled with a multitude of mighty messengers. The heavenly host, the sky was filled with multitudes of angels. First, we have an angel announcing and Gabriel announcing to the shepherds. And then that's not enough. That's not enough. Multitudes of angels fill the sky. Can you imagine? I, you know, I, as I read, I get mind pictures as, as, as we do. And I just picture the whole sky lit up with angels. And, and look, at, it says the angels, they, they didn't sing their Christmas carol in verse 14. It's, it's glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Notice that peace only comes after praising. Peace only comes after praising. We must put God first and his glory will follow. Praising, then peace. When we give glory to God, he gives good news to us. Jesus came for the glory of God and for the good of all people. We could say in this way, peace comes to those who praise him and grace to those who give him glory. Peace. Peace is so important to have that calmness, to have that assurance that everything's okay. And many times I, I get caught up in the day-to-day -day busyness of life. That I forget that God wants me to praise Him. He wants me to adore Him. He wants me to give it all to Him. So that He can help in all situations and help me to have that peace. Good news. A question this morning. Are, are you planting peace in others or sowing seeds of strife? Ooh. Is there anyone that you need to make things right with? Anyone you need to make peace with? Are you in conflict this Christmas with someone in your family? Maybe a root of bitterness has gone down deep in your life. It's time to let it go. Maybe the best Christmas present you could give is to make peace with them. 
I know Christmas is a very stressful time. Family, presents, family, 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 presents, food. It can be a lot of anxious times. Notice verse 14. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on peace to those on him whose favor rests. Let's say that all together. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Praising first. And God will give you the peace. Let's read on. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told them about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen, which were just as they had been told. The shepherds didn't just stay in the fields and watch their sheep. They left their cozy campfire, their time together. And they went and they found Jesus God's announcements are our invitations for us to draw near to Him, near to God and experience Him fully in our lives. Faith is experiencing God in our life and walking in the reality that He is with us every day. The shepherds accepted the invitation of the angels. They went to Bethlehem. They beheld the Christ child and knelt at the manger. The shepherds saw what the angels had said was true. Looking at the baby, they knew what they were seeing was their Savior. What happened next? Did they just head back to those sheep? No. They told everybody they saw about Jesus. They told everybody they saw about Jesus. You ever notice that when you encounter Christ, you want to share him with all? Jesus, Jesus is the good news. And the shepherds, they, 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 as they headed back, they couldn't help but tell others the good news. Their message was simple. They told others what they had seen and heard. They related their experience with the angel and the hosts of heaven and relayed what the angel had had told them. Our calling as disciples to Jesus is similar to the shepherds. We are given the privilege of sharing God's presence in our lives. We're able to share the good news of Jesus. You know, the shepherds eventually left and returned to their fields. You know, I've had people tell me, Pastor, I love coming to church and... and I just feel so at home and so comfortable. But we've got to go out. We have to give the good news. We have to share the good news to others. The shepherds couldn't stay there in the manger and worship Christ. They had to go out and share the good news. My hope, my prayer this morning on this Christmas morning is that you will share the news of Jesus. Tell others what Jesus means to you. God has great things in store for you. Do you believe that? Amen. Christmas 2016 can make a difference in my life, can make a difference in your life if we allow Christ be a part of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I've asked John to finish our service with a song.